Yo, yo, what's up? Anybody out there? Figure out how to fix this camera. Yo, what's up, Baba? I'm all right, man. Just at home, figured I would do a random live stream. Yeah, I notification been working messed up. Yeah, notifications has been working messed up for me too. I don't get notifications of Rico's or anyone else's stream, so but how's the tank going, Bubba? There's the link, link if anyone wants to join. So yeah, I was just doing some work on the nano tank today. Added a new Jabo powerhead. I think it's called the RW Jabo RW2. Let me see if I can find the rocks. SW2, not a RW2, SW2, JMO SW2. Yeah, it's a nice little power head for the Nano. I, I like it. It's like two inches by an inch. Yeah, I don't like six six lines, Bubba. I think I've, I've put them in every tank I've had except this one, and I learned my lesson, and it's hard to catch them. You basically have to take the tank apart. So when I first put this one in, it was at 40%. I think it came by default at 40%. And it splashed a lot of water out of the tank. So I had to mix up some salt water. So I was getting some film collecting on the the surface of the water so i i needed another power head because the the return pump even with the flow accelerator or flow eductor or whatever it's called even with that it was still it still wasn't enough flow for the rest of the tank so i'm pretty happy with it so far it's only one day but i'm happy with it so far The algae reactor on the tank, sup DeAndre, the algae reactor on the tank is working well. I'm happy with it. I tested this morning. No nitrates. I used the HANA low range phosphate checker and I think I got 0 0.01. So I'm really happy with that. So my kids, my kids feed and they feed pretty heavy.
So I want to hear about some nano tanks, man. Somebody tell me about their nano tanks. That's a DC pump. Here's a controller. Give me a second. Let, let me see if I can get some better light. Yeah, so here's the controller. Has a couple of modes that I haven't quite figured out yet. It also has a light sensor, which I, I guess you can um, you can you can have it at night, which is kind of cool. For forty bucks, got it for forty bucks on Prime Day. Someone says he doesn't see the video. All right, can you see it now, DeAndre? Oh, come on. Yo. All right, let me try. Give me a sec. Let me see if I can. Can you see it now? All right. So let me, let me show you the controller again. All right, here it is. And there's a little light sensor which I, right here, which I guess you can use to turn the flow down automatically at night. I haven't quite, you know, gone through all the features yet, but what's up, Dave? All right, so hang on a second. Let me give you guys a full full tour of the tank. All right. So it's lit by a Radeon XR15 G4. Hey, just send me a message if, if there's anything going wrong. So yeah, lit by a Radeon XR15 G4. I got that from someone used, got a great deal. So I got, I got two, for, um, two for a good price. And um, Bubba got, you know, Bubba is rocking the other one. So got a good deal. My apartment is hot. So I, I have a, um, this, I think this is called a Tonzi Aqua Wind. That's just clipped on to the, to the tank right there. That's how I cool the tank. It's, it runs almost all the time. So I have to refill the HCO every, every day or two. Um, filtration is a algae reactor that I built. That's a Fosman 150 reactor. And um, I, those Marine Depot lights that they, that they sell, I just literally, it's the stock lights and I use some zip ties. I didn't even really clean up the excess. You can see the excess right here. I didn't even clip off the excess. I got to clean that up. So, it's just some lights. I think it was 30 bucks that Marine Depot sells. And in a week, I think it's about half full with Chato already. So it's fed by, there's a lot, there's a lot of mess going on here. So it's fed by, um, by a, by a little high door, hundred gallons per hour pump. Stock return. Everything else is pretty much stock. I changed the, the nozzle, the return nozzle, 
to a flow accelerator that just rotates and gives a little bit of random flow. In the reactor, um, high door sells these really tiny pumps. I, I, I think it's 100 gallons an hour. This is a Nouveau Peninsula 14. Yeah, Nouveau Peninsula 14. So the coral, so I had a beautiful gold torch coral right there in the back. You know, I, I, I guess when I, when I went to that new Ecotech AB plus, um, it, it didn't like it and it died. So that all happened in a week. I didn't even get a chance to, I didn't even get a chance to, to, to do anything, to save it, move it. It just deteriorated just within the course of a couple of days. It just died. One that I bought from Rico, that one is doing well in the big tank, but that's, that's one I've had for a while. Got a frog spawn here. He's doing all right. I just moved him today. He was on the back glass, so I had to make room for and this tank is just an overload of Zoas. That's uh, some kind of leather coral. That's another one. That one has just tan polyps. That one has green polyps. A lot of these corals, I don't know the name of. Just got a bunch of different Zoas. All that's in this tank is just two clownfish. I had a coral banded shrimp and he he caught one of my fish, so I took him out, put him in a big tank, and they fight every day. Yeah, plenty of mushrooms, Dave. Plenty of mushrooms. I, I got a lot of random frags on the sand bed. I don't know if you could see them. That's stuff my wife bought at Reefa Palooza and I don't know what I'm gonna do what we're going to do with it because we really I had a plan for the tank and then the wife went to Reefa Palooza and spent a bunch of money on coral so now that plan is out the window but I'm not complaining too much to clean the glass I just use the flip flipper nano I clean the glass probably every you know two or three days that's my son's job this is really supposed to be his tank so can clean a glass every couple of days, but it doesn't get too dirty. And for a cleanup crew, just a couple of snails and a couple of snails, a couple of turbo snails. Any other questions, guys? I think I forgot something. So in the back, so because, you know, the algae reactor keeps nutrients low, I set up a VRS dosing pump that basically doses, it doses um, Kalkwasser, which keeps, maintains alkalinity and calcium. So literally behind the tank, there is just a bottle of Kalkwasser that I mix up every couple of weeks. So this needs a change right now. So it's just a, a, a dosing line. Kalkwasser. I made a container, drilled it, you know, with the, the bulk resupply, the bulk LD cell. So yeah, I change this every couple of weeks. It stays potent because it's an airtight bottle. And that sits behind the tank. That's hidden. You can't even see it. It's hidden back there. And it's just a BRS dosing pump on a timer. And let's see, I got a question from Bubba. How much more difficult is a nano versus a hundred? I, you know what? I don't know. I'm one of those people that try to automate as much as possible. So here I got. Hang on, I gotta, I gotta adjust. Um, 
my tripod a little bit. So this is kind of messy, but I have a apex here. This is supposed to be an apex. There's random, my kids got balloons and stuff. And yeah, this is an apex junior. And they, you know, like an Apple, an Apple Airport Express that connects it to the main, to my main network. So on the Apex itself, it's, it's an Apex Junior with just four outlets. So on the Apex Junior itself, I have the algae reactor lights, I have the fan, the BRS dosing pump, and yeah, something else. Oh, the ATO, the Tunzi ATO. I don't know if a nano is, I, I think for a newer reefer, a nano is going to be harder because if you, if you mess up, if you screw up, you're basically, you know, nuking the entire tank. But, you know, I have a little, a couple years experience, so, but I've seen some awesome nano tanks, man. I think reef, Reef Builders, Jake Adams, did a, went to a shop recently where he toured some nano tanks and, you know, some of those tanks were awesome. I have, the, on the top right, that is some SPS, I'm not sure which that's just a purple Montipora. And there is a Setosa and a green Samacora. Yeah, I, yeah, Bubba, I get, I, I, Dave and Bubba, I get, I bought a, I bought a, a Petco, it's a Petco two and a half gallon tank sits on the floor. That's my evaporation container. And with the fan running to keep it cool, you know, two or three days I have to refill it. So I am, you know, both resupply sells these, these, these ATO containers that hold five gallons. And it's, I have a six inch sp slot. And I, and I think it'll fit, it, it, I measured it, it'll fit right in there. So that's where I'm hoping to go with that. You know what, I've, I've never tested the pH on this tank, so I don't know if the pH is better. What do I think about the drop-off tanks? I, I, I like how they look. But I, I don't know if it's for me. I think I, I wanna have a giant tank and then a couple of nanos. But I've seen some some that are really aquascape. I think inappropriate reefer is running one, and his looks his looks good. Hey, what's up, Mike? Hey, Dave, you want to jump in? Or are you working today? If the Triton system goes well on my 75. I think I'm gonna put a Triton, Triton system on this tank, man. Just, you know, that coral box doser, I'm so, I'm so impressed by it. The little coral box doser, it. Get, you know, get a, the, the thousand milliliter jugs, maybe, you know, take a smaller portion out and put it on this tank. So with the algae reactor and the and the, the 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 Triton system, I might never have to do water changes on this tank, which would be awesome. All right, Bubba. 
I understand. Did I take the hang off back? So this is actually a different tank. So that so with that old video where I made um, where I had um, that was a standard ten gallon Petco tank. So I took that tank down and transferred everything over to this innovative marine 14 gallon tank and that's one of the reasons i did that i have a video in my channel titled algae reactor 10 gallon nano um i'm talk i'm answering freshman reefers question so the, the reason we took that tank down is because there was so much stuff hanging off the side of the tank so i had a fluval aqua clear filter hanging on one side on the other side, I had the algae reactor. There was just so much stuff hanging off the side of the tank that it made it look messy. So I, at Manhattan Aquariums, I got a good deal on this 14-gallon um, peninsula tank. So that kind of negated the need to, ha to have anything hanging on the side of this tank. So the, the, um, the Fluval Aqua Clear, I took it down. I have it you know, in storage on my fire escape where I store everything in a closed um in some closed, you know, containers. And whenever I need to quarantine, I'll put it on a standard pet 10 gallon Petco nan and a standard Petco 10 gallon tank, hang it off the side. And that'll be my quarantine hospital. Or when I get new fish, that's my observation tank. It's easy to t take up, take it up, put it on the floor, put it on a corner, low light, stick that filter on it. And, you know, I have activated carbon. I always have some live rock or a bag of media in the sump of my, um, of my bigger tank. So I always have media ready to go cycled. So what's up, CJ? Yeah, man. So I'm, I'm probably going to do triton on this if triton works out for the big tank why not no water changes that's i mean no water changes is sounding is is sounding good for me hey bubba let me know send me a, you got my number man bubba send me a text message on what kind of pump you're looking for I remember I got a whole bunch of stuff just sitting there in storage. So let, let me know what kind of pump you're looking for, Bubba. Um, you know, still go. It's it's a fifty percent off, so still go and look. But if you don't find what you're looking for, let me know what kind of pump you want. I might have some maxi jets, some standard maxi jets, the low flow, you know, like the hundred, a hundred and fifty per gallon maxi jet sitting around. So let me know what you're looking for. Mike Lemming, you're looking for a dosing pump right now, Mike, because of Hold, hang on, I'm gonna change cameras, but let me let me show you, let me just show Mike something quickly. All right, I'm gonna be going through the apartment, so just give me a sec, guys. Yeah. So, so because I put the new coral box doser on, I have like four or five BRS dosing pumps that I don't need anymore. I was thinking of selling them or maybe raffling them off on the channel, but yeah, I got this. This is I have a couple more in storage. So, yeah, I'm probably going to be, this is the big tank. I'm probably going to be raffling them off on the channel. Or, Mike, I'll post my email address. You can hit me up and let me know um, if you're interested in one. All right, guys. Let me let me post my email address. Just give me a sec. I gotta gotta just give my kids some lunch, so it'll take about sixty seconds. So.
talk amongst yourselves for a minute. And then pour out some juice for him. All right, yeah, guys, I'm back. Oh. <laughs> yeah, so I'm running the coral box doser on the big tank. And so I have right now I have four working BRS dosing pumps. So hit me up. I have another two or three that I'm not sure if they work or if they need, you know, that the replacement tubing. So email me and I'll test them and, and I'll let you know. But the, the Coral Box pump, I'm, I'm so impressed with it. It's small, space is an issue, you know, in my apartment, so it's small, fits right where I need it to fit, works well, it's programmable by Wi-Fi. All right, I, I heard a, a, um, a notification, so I'll check it once the live stream is finished, but... Yeah, I'll probably add a coral box doser here, do Triton on this tank. Once Triton is proven its worth on the big tank, but I'm probably doing it the wrong way. I probably should have tested it on the small tank first. That is, yeah, I probably should have tested it. That would have been the smart thing to do, but, you know. Is that a deep sand bed? I would say at its deepest, it's about two inches. So I would say no, my plan is to get a goby, a goby shrimp pair here. So that's why I put a little bit more sand than, you know, than usual. But that's not, it's not meant to be a deep sand bed. A deep sand bed is probably the biggest mistake I've ever made in reefing. There's people that run, you know, successful deep sand beds, but I started out with a you know, a, a four or five inch sand bed. It didn't work for me, maybe because I didn't, I used like a big grain size. So it was, it was probably a nutrient sink. And then my, that was a 20 gallon. Then when I upgraded to a 37 gallon, I went deeper. I had like an eight inch sand bed and, you know, I kept going deeper. And then with this current Red Sea, my Red Sea 350 tank, I decided, you know, just scrap it. Just have a one inch sand bed, half an inch sand bed. And you know, vacuum it whenever whenever it gets dirty. And I really haven't even vacuumed it. Every now and again, I I go in with I have one of those coral pointers, and I just you know run it through the sand beds, the open parts of the sand bed. But I have some I have some critters. I, I don't remember what they're called. I keep having to go to Live Aquaria. Look at the invertebrate section to to remember what they're called. But they do a good job of you know, consuming whatever is in the sand bed. I'm on the live Aquaria website right now looking at it. Those are sea cucumbers. I have some cucumbers. So a guy who travels back and forth between New York and Florida, he has a place in Florida. He brought me, he caught one or found them down in Florida and gave me one and it's multiplied. Now I have four or five. So I'm, I'm happy with them. Haven't had to vacuum or I've never vacuumed my sand bed, but I take one of the pointers and stir it around a little bit. So I'm, I'm happy with it. Um, let me let me see if there's anything else I'm missing. 
Um, I'm using a Tunzi Osmolator. I I was using it on the big tank. I decided to use it here. It's working fine. You know, um, because of the nano tank, it's a nano. It um it the alarm goes on a lot, so I opened the box and I turned off the alarms. So it doesn't alarm, it doesn't alert me, but it does stop the flow of water. If the there's an optical eye for the first water level sensor and then there's a backup float switch so it, it does you know stop the flow of water when the float switch gets activated but it doesn't alarm because my son was you know if you stick your hand in a tank or something any little thing you do it um it it, it alarms and it's loud am i running a wave meter yes i am i am running just today i added a Here's the box, a Jabo SW2. And it's, it's hard to see, but it's running there in the back. Yep, that's it there. It's about two inches from front to back and then an inch wide. And I'm running it on the lowest setting possible. If I run it any higher, if I run it any higher, water kind of splashes out of the tank where I have it. So it's good. What are my thoughts on a Chato reactor? Works well, man. Keeps my nutrients at zero. I don't have to do water changes on this tank. So... The Chato reactor is half full, and uh, and it's it's half full, and I only emptied it last week. So yeah, my kids do all the feeding on this tank, and sometimes I cringe when I see the amount of flakes or something they put in. But then again, you know the nutrients stay zero, so you know what am I complaining about? I cringe, but I tell them to feed a little less, but I don't go too overboard. So, um, wave me, um, Chato reactor. Yeah, I, I'm running one on my big tank and I absolutely love it. All right. Give me a sec. Let me, let me, um, let me just, let me just go over to the big tank to the 75. All right. Turn it down a little, Tyler. All right, so that's the 75. Let me move some stuff around so I can show you guys the sum. The one that Christian started eating his, so the other one is yours. Ah, all right, guys, give me a sec.
All right, guys, I'm back. So that's uh, you should be looking at a shot of the sum. Yeah, you should be looking at a shot of the sum. So that's the that's the do it yourself algae reactor that I was trying to take off the tank last night, but I realized I I don't have I need a couple of connections. So I got a good deal on a Pax Bellum. It's a sweet looking piece of hardware. Expensive, but sweet. So I got a good deal on that. So I am going to take that that do-it-yourself algae reactor offline and put the put the Pax Bellum on. And one of the main reasons I need to submerge, I need to move it from where it is because it's I can't change my filter socks. Yeah, thanks for the kind words. The 75 is looking good. I'm happy about it. It's overstocked, so you know it needs all the filtration it can handle, it can get. Um, nitrates I haven't tested in a while. Phosphates are high. I got my Triton test back, and Triton said my phosphates are, you know, high. So I don't remember. I think point 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 three, and I think I need to get it down to point oh one. So hence the you know me trying the algae reactors along with the little refugium I have. Yeah, Haley, they work well. They do. And um, just ask Reef Dudes. Reef Dudes sent me the link to the lights, the lights that I have on the, the one on the 75. And these lights are, they say they're waterproof, but I wouldn't submerge them. But, you know, just splash proof. The ones I got from Marine Depot, I, I wouldn't get them underwater. But these are rated for, you know, I, I forgot what the ratings are, but because they're waterproof, you know, you can get some water splashed on them and it shouldn't hurt anything. So, and that's just a standard reactor. I've seen people make them with the BRS reactors. That's an Aquamax reactor. Ultra Reef has a little kit. So there's a lot of ways to do them. And the one on the 75, it's been a week, and the, the cha that's how my phosphates are high. The chato is, it's already full, so I'm going to need to empty it, so. How long has my tank been up? Since last February, so February 2016. Get yeah, her easy. Attach a pump. Put some water through it. Yeah, I'm, I'm not a handy person. And, you know, I, it was easy for me to make. Just put it around, put some zip ties. And I, you know, in the bedroom, you know, you can take the added step of maybe putting some clear saran wrap around it to protect the LEDs if they're not waterproof. I did that before, but it, you know, it works fine. Yeah, I like the Hanna phosphate checker. It's really, it's really easy, really easy to use, and gives a digital reading, which is, you know, it's it's just a pain in the butt to do because it's a it's a packet, and you have to make sure you get all the you have to flip it, you know, make sure you shake up the the little, make sure you you know flick it with your fingers a little bit to, you know, before you open it, and then you have to open it, and then you have to make sure you get all of it out. It's a pain. It's it's a little bit of a pain get all of it out and then you have three minutes, like there's a timer, there's a set amount of time that you can do to, you know, before the checker shuts off and you're, you, you know, you have to do it again, but you know, you get the hang of it and it's worth it.
So the stocking on the 75 is two chromis, three leopard wrasses, a, it's not small anymore, but a nasal tang that's getting big, a blue hippo tang, a fairy wrass, a yellow tang, and a, um, I had a yellow, a yellow wrasse, chorus wrasse that jumped out a couple days ago. Yeah, my kids are playing Xbox. So if you hear some noise. And um, a copper band butterfly. Yeah, my chorus wrasse jumped out a couple days ago. Um, I have two angel fish, a coral beauty and a flame angel. And uh, a liar tail antheus. But I, I have these screen tops built. I had these screen tops built, but somehow I, I, lo I, I feel like it's almost, it's almost a crime to have a nice rimless tank and then having to put a screen top on it. So I kind of refuse to put the screen top on it and it's, um, it, and it, yeah, so I've had fish jumping, so I might have to go back to putting it on. All right, okay, I got it, I got it, Tyler, thank you. Yeah, Mike, I understand, I gotta go back to work too. I work from home, so I probably, I got some meetings this afternoon. As I'm talking to you guys, shucks. I know you guys can't see it, but I know you guys can't see it, but like four heads of my candy cane is gone. All right, guys. Yeah, I'm gonna have to test parameters because uh, four heads, it, it wasn't like that yesterday. Four heads of my candy cane are gone. And then, you know, the tips of my SPS looks like they're bleached. Yeah. All right, thanks, Haley. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, I'm in the middle of, you know, moving over to Triton. So my tank is, you know, I'm, I'm a little bit nervous. And I, I should have probably taken my time and did the transition a lot slower, but I didn't in my excitement. I, I, took, the, I took the zeolite rocks off one day, and then I lost some chalices. So then instead of leaving myself in that limbo for a couple more days, I just went ahead and said, yeah, let me just transition and just take the brunt of it and, you know, I had three chalices died, and now it looks like I have some. I don't know if it's because of Triton or what, but my green slimer, the SPS, the tips are bleached, and then I, some candy cane, three heads are gone. Thanks, our commander. So. Um, one more thing I'm going to show you guys before I go. So you hear Dave and I talking about how my anemone split. So last night I came, this morning I came in, I got another anemone. I think in the shot I'm showing you guys now, at the top, there's a bunch of them at the top, there's, there's a couple at the top and in the back of the tank and this morning, I, yeah, a new anemone. I think it's a new one because I counted. So now I gave away two. So I, I think I'm back to five bubble tips and five bubble tip anemones again. Yeah, yeah. 
it's yeah, not cool. I mean, it's good that they keep splitting, but you know, they keep walking around, so they keep hurting other things. All right, guys. It was good talking to you. I love these live streams, and um, I'll talk to you guys another time. But thanks for watching, man. Thank you, and enjoy the rest of your day. Yeah, Haley says that she has three, and I, she doesn't want three. I started with one, and I have six or seven, and I keep giving them away. Simply reefing, you're joining when we're leaving. All right, I'll catch you guys later. All right, enjoy.